morning. It's half past six and I'm up and rolling already. I had a good, comfortable, peaceful night there at the Coniston campsite. <sighs> so it's quite a nice morning. The sun's trying its best to poke through the dark clouds. <laughs> Sunshine and showers is forecast all day. So let's get to the village first. It's about a mile and see if there's any shops open for a bit of breakfast. This is Coniston, very pleasant little village. Still decked out in Union Jacks from the Jubilee last weekend. One of the things the village is famous for is Donald Campbell, who was a world land speed record holder and a world water speed record holder back in the 60s. And it was here in 1967 where he was trying to break the world water speed record again on the lake on Coniston Water. And unfortunately there was uh, an accident and he died. The boat sank and they, could, they didn't recover it at the time. It was only till many years later, 2001, that they finally recovered it and laid him to rest here in the village with a headstone with Bluebird on it, which was the name of the boat. Well, I've reached Tarn House, a very popular tourist destination. <laughs> but I've got here, it's nine o'clock on a Saturday morning and it's deserted. So what a privilege it is to have it to myself. Well yesterday when I started, I said doing the Cumbria way was going to feel like visiting a load of old friends and it certainly feels like that now here at Tarn House. It's, uh, it's about 15 years since I've been here and uh, the last time we were here our children were really small <laughs> and I carried one of them <laughs> up and down fell. <laughs> Oh, it's beautiful here and there's no one around. It's great. Slug. Who said money doesn't grow on trees? down to the road. Down here. It's 
So shortly after High Park, the farmhouse we just passed, um, you go through another gate and then there's a slight detour. That's the main Cumbria way. But if you go down here to the left, it's not far, to Colwith Force, it's uh, a waterfall. So I'm gonna go and take a look at that. And the wind's just picked up. It's all crazy again, like yesterday. I mean, it's no Niagara Falls, but actually it was bigger and more powerful than I was expecting. Down to the road and through the Hobbit Gate. Yep, Shinhai Hobbit Gate. I'm at Skelwith Bridge. A little bit of road walking. No footpath, be careful. That's the second waterfall of the day, Skelwith Force. And the sun's come out. <laughs> I got some great views of Langdale up ahead for the next few miles. The sun won't last forever, but it looks good right now. <laughs> in chapel style. Oh, lots of good memories there. The Wainwrights Inn reminds me of long days in the hills, being exhausted and uh, coming into that pub and um, sitting near a roaring log fire with uh, roast lamb shank. Oh man. And then sleeping like a log. <laughs> Oh, the wind's picking up again. It was quite a rough walk over the other side of the valley. I'm, I've crossed over to this side of the valley now uh, and I'm right underneath the nose of the Langdale Pikes just up there. Um, behind me, this is Stickle Barn, another one of my favorite Lake District pubs. This is turning into a, a tour of Lake District pubs, isn't it? But uh, you know me. <laughs> you will notice, however, that I haven't partaken yet. Not yet, anyway. But uh, something else, a little tip. Um, just walking along there, and I noticed um, a cold wetness on the on the side of my uh, my top on the left side. I'll reach round, wet water bottle. Took it out, and um, the cap was missing. Now, normally you'd have to just drink it and then forget it, and you can't refill it, can you? But uh, I always carry a spare cap. So easy, just get the spare cap out, put it back on, back to normal, and it weighs nothing. So that's uh, Justin's hiking tip of the day, carry a spare cap.
there's a band coming down from Bowfell and it's just over there that Dan and I were descending and um, Jet Pack Man landed on the path in front of us. I caught it on video, if you haven't seen it, go and have a look at that video. It was amazing. A bloke with a jet plaque landed on the path in front of us. Amazing. Oh my God, it's Iron Man. <laughs> Honestly, we had, no, we had no idea what was going on there. A bloke just came up the path and warned us, be careful, something unusual is going to happen. I'll let you know if it's a risk. And he comes jetting up the hill. Bloody hell. This glacial valley is called Mickledon and uh, it's quite remote and windswept. <laughs> okay, so I'm nearly at the head of this valley and as you can see, there is a massive wall of rock in the way, which is very high and steep. Uh, there are two passes. There's one to the left side over there, which is called Rosset Gill, which takes you up to Escors and over to Scarfell Pike and the Cumbria Way goes over the right pass over this side which is called Stake Pass and takes you over towards Borrowdale and I'm definitely going to need another break before I attempt that ascent <laughs> Stake Pass, right here we go then it's not that bad okay I've had my little break fruit and nut mix to give me the power to get up this hill and uh, soak my feet in the cold waters of the beck that's worked for me before it's uh, pretty cold today but they feel fresher so hopefully I've breathed enough life into them to help me get up there I'm about halfway up now you can see the back down there and some of the zigzags on the way up. So far so good. I made it <laughs> to the top of the steep bit at least. Uh, the official top of the pass is a bit further on but um, it's mostly flat from here. Uh, but I'm in this cool uh, bowl, it's called uh, Langdale Coombe. Huge bowl shaped area. Yeah, it's left over from some glacial formation and these egg-shaped little hills everywhere, they're called moraines. And just over there, not much further, is the actual top of the pass. Hooray! The top of Stoke Pass. So the Cumbria Way path goes down the right side of the valley all the way along there and I'm sure it's a great route and I'd be doing it if the conditions were better but on the top there oh the wind got vicious and the rain as well it was hammering only for a short time but it was there was no way I was camping up the top um, however if I cross this other footbridge here to the left side of the beck and follow that all the way down to the valley uh, end um, there's a campsite there and given the conditions the winds picking up again <laughs> given the conditions I want to find some sheltered spot in a campsite
at last, down to the valley floor. Well, I finished for the day. Oh, I was leaving that rather late. Came right down off State Pass, down Langstrath Valley, all the way to Stonethwaite. Oh, and there was a campsite there which wasn't great, so I thought, oh, I'm going to get a and b I'm really tired. 145 quid and 109 quid. That's a bit steep for me. Anyway, so I'm in, um, I'm in this campsite. Um, I've forgotten the name of it. Nine pound <laughs> bargain. So I'm going to get pitched up, but it was a monster. Far more miles than I expected to do today. 22 miles, so I'm pretty tired. So I'm all pitched up, that's my tent behind me. It's called uh, Chapel House Farm Campsite. And uh, the guy was very friendly and helpful. And that's the end of day two. See you tomorrow. <laughs>